another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Today, Infanticide, the story of a father and his sons. Dramatized by Alan Sloan, from a story written by Eliezer Lipsky. Catman, live on this floor, friend. Flash down the end of the hall. Follow you now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mrs. Catman, Wilfred Catman. Yes, sir. Oh, my name's Veely. I spoke to your husband about insurance on the children. Oh, oh, that's my son. Wilfred's my son. My daughter-in-law's gone to work. So is Wilfred. Oh, I see. Well, uh, but he um... told me about it. Wilfred told me about it. Mind to come in? I could sign the papers there is to sign. Yes, ma'am. Seems a good thing. And she? Oh, yes, ma'am. Sure. Oh, come in. Come in. Don't mind the mess with kids. It's follow and pick up, follow and pick yes, up. Yes, ma'am. Now, I understand there's Willie and Chauncey. Willie and Chauncey, that's right. Chauncey, he's going on six, and Willie, he's just past seven. Uh-huh. Have them close together, you know, and two is easy to take care of as one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Now, <clears throat> if you and your son have agreed on this insurance, you can just sign right down there where the little X is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's All righty. Down by the little X, yeah. right? That's it. I got the arthritis, you know. I don't write so fast. Yes, ma'am. Uh, three copies, please, there. Does seem funny, though, insuring little fellas like that. And there. Paint as if they invented the bug powerful enough to carry them off. Healthy little guys, eh? Well, you just look out the window and the big husky little redhead pushing all the others around. That there's Chauncey. Oh, yeah, I noticed him when I come in the tenement. Takes after his dad, eh? And, uh... Which one's Wilfred Jr.? Oh, oh, he's sleeping. This muggy weather, the asthma takes him in the night sometimes, so we let him sleep late. Oh. We all had the asthma. We all outgrew it. Nobody never died of it in the family. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Catman told me about the asthma. It's the humidity these nights bothers him, I guess. Yes, sir, but he's a real fine boy. Not as big as his little brother, but strong and wiry. Long bones. Come 15, 16, why, he'll just shoot right up. Sure, that's the way it is. Now, you have Mr. Catman sign those. I mm-hmm. take it Mrs. Catman's at work. Oh, yes, you said that. Yes, she's well, gone up at 6.30, and you just missed my son. He's off by 8. But you come on in and take a look at Willie. I want you to see he's just a fine, healthy boy. Just the asthma. Oh, one. no, I don't think now, I... Now, I'll take you just a minute. He ought to be up and playing in the sunshine anyway. Bad nights, Willie sleeps with his daddy and mommy. Their room's got the wind. Uh-huh. Lord, don't you wish you could sleep like a child sleeps? Yeah. Willie, rise and shine. Get up, big boy. Come on. Oh, now let him sleep. I know how my kids get when now, they... Now, come on, Willie. Your grandma got to shake your weight. Willie. Wilfred Jr. What's the matter? Something wrong? Boy, stone cold. Cold as the clay. Willie boy. Mister. He's dead. Get the police. P- police? Let me call the doctor. Maybe he's sick. He's dead. Stone cold dead. Poor baby. Get the law, Mr. Dunn. She done it this time. Don't oh. you finally got it oh, oh, done? Who do you mean? His mother, his own natural mother. Get the law. <laughs> just a moment, we will return for the second act of Suspense. And now, here's a message from the watchmakers of Switzerland. Swiss vacation, for you know, Swiss vacation. Win a fabulous vacation for two in beautiful Switzerland. Enter the Swiss vacation contest. It's easy, nothing to buy. Pick up a free entry blank at a jewelry store or other store that sells quality watches. Then in 25 words or less, complete this statement. A quality watch is the best value because there are 1,000 prizes. First prize, a 21-day vacation for two in Switzerland. You fly deluxe Swiss Air both ways. Visit many colorful places. 
all expenses paid for two people, plus $500 extra spending money. Second, third, and fourth prizes. 15-day Swiss vacations for two. Also, four mink stoles, eight Bolex movie cameras and projectors, 12 Hermes typewriters, 160 $100 watches, 812 gala assortments of Tobler Swiss chocolates. Enter the Swiss vacation contest today. Free entry blanks at your jewelry store. Ed, the father's outside. Hmm? The dead boy's father, Catman. Oh, oh. How's he taking it? I don't think he knows where he is, what he's doing. It was his firstborn, Ed. Mm -hmm. Nothing on the mother yet? Hmm? No, Ed. All right, send him in. Uh, Mr. Catman. Come in. Come in. Uh, Mr. Catman, this is Mr. Morgan I told you about at the precinct. Assistant District Attorney. I remember... Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Morgan will want to ask you a few questions about the boy. Investigation, you see. Wilfred Jr. Willie, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Lord. Dear Lord. Take a chair, Mr. Catman. <laughs> you smoke if you like. Lord, Lord. He come and told me the boy's dead, sir. Yes, that's right. Now, can you pull yourself together for just a few questions? I guess so. What is it? Your mother told the insurance man your wife had uh, finally done it, was the way she put it. My wife? Yes. Had your wife ever tried to do the boy harm in any way? No, sir. Then what was your mother referring to? Well... There was that time. At what time? She lost him. How's that? She took him out and come home without him. Asked her where Willie was, and she said she left him with her folks. Could I have one of them cigarettes now? Sure. She left Willie with her family, you say? That's right. One night, uh, two nights. And I got to missing the little cuss, and I called on the folks to bring him back home. And he wasn't there. I never had him. But where was he? She up and left him on a doorstep with some folks in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Who found him? After two, three days, they took him to the police. And when was this? Last week. Now, wait a minute. How old was Willie? Eight? Eight. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord. I'm just dying. Just let me die. Left him in the neighborhood and he couldn't find his own way home? An eight-year-old? Told him to stay put. Your wife told him? Yes, sir. But the police returned him. Now, who notified them? I guess I did. When was this? Last week? Around then. A little longer, I guess. Around this time last year, seems like. Mr. Catman, do you know where you are? Police. What month is this? Summertime. Dr. Russell, may I see you for a minute? Yes, Mr. Marvin. Call the 25th. Find out if they've got a missing person complaint on the boy or an aided card on his recovery. Okay, sure. Now, Mr. Catman. Mr. Uh, I didn't rightly get your name, Mr. Morgan. Let me ask... Could I rest up a bit? You want me to hold off on the questions for a while? Uh, yes, sir. Is it all right if I pray in here? Well, I... Yeah, of course. I haven't called upon the Lord not once yet to let the little fella not be dead. I'd like to call upon the Lord to let it all not be. Oh, Mr. Catman, get hold of yourself. It's very important. Excuse me. Morgan. 
Ed, on the wife losing the boy, they remembered it down the precinct. I talked to the detective who investigated. Did it happen? Not exactly the way he told it. She left him with friends all right, but it was on account of a fight they'd had. The man and the wife. Right. Well, any way, the wife was afraid he'd harm the boy. By the way, the 25th is everybody out looking for her. She never turned up at work. Yeah, well, what was the fight about? The boy's father. What? And what were they fighting about? That's what the fight was about, Ed. A running fight since the boy was born. Who was the father? Catman isn't. Mr. Catman, let's get back to Willie. He wasn't your child, you said. Uh, no, sir. I was in the army. He couldn't have. But it was like he was. Was what? My own. Uh -huh. Did you like him? Not at the first. But when... Well, when you put out your finger on this little thing like a hand on a little mama doll with them deep creases to the wrist, you know? When it grabs hold like it was all there was in the world to hang on to for safety and trust. Yeah, yes, go on. You, you can't help loving it. There isn't a man who wouldn't. No matter whose. You loved Willie as a baby. And a boy, too. Oh, dear Lord. Can I see him? I never got to see him yet, sir. Later. Did he ever know you weren't his daddy? Not unless he heard us arguing over it, me and her. How did he feel about you? Same way. Love me. I wouldn't trust nobody else. How do you know that? Uh, like with the needles. Hmm? It was the asthma. He, he had to have the needle. Injection. The shots. Yes, sir. Uh, and he wouldn't let the doctor. Uh, unless I held him. Only me. He said, I know it won't hurt. Because my daddy wouldn't let you. Wouldn't let you what? Hurt him. I wouldn't let him... Morgan. Now, this is Sergeant Bowen, 25th. Yes, Sergeant. On that dead boy, we went over the bathroom, Mr. Morgan. The toilet was stopped up, so we took a snake to it. What did you find? A necktie. In a moment, we will return for the third act of Suspense. Hola, amigo. You want to know about stereo phonographs? Listen to my last bullfight on ordinary stereo. Ole! But now, Colombia Stereo 1. <laughs> ah, there is a corrida de toros. Real life like Magnifica. There is such a big difference in stereo phonographs. With most, all you get is a couple of speakers shooting in different directions. But with Columbia, ah, hombre, you get fantastic stereo projection. What it does is to send circles of sound sweeping through every inch of a room. You are surrounded with live sound, live feeling, live passion. Ole, ole! How they cheered me. Ask your Columbia phonograph dealer to demonstrate stereo one by Columbia. Prices start as low as $39.95 for portables, $129.95 for consoles. El Picador, who let that bull out? He'd have these asthmatic attacks at night, you'd say. And he'd wheeze and go for breath and couldn't catch it. And he'd cry out, Daddy, I can't breathe. And we'd take him into our bed. We had the window. Mm -hmm. Then he'd sleep. After bed, he'd make this... <clears throat> that kind of noise. Drive you crazy. What could you do? Wake him up. Willie, I'd say. Willie, you're snorkeling again. Sleep quiet, boy, I'd say. Sleep quiet. Man's got to get his rest. What would he say? 
Mostly nothing. And go back to sleep. But sometimes just... Daddy... Mm. Like that. Mm. And go on snorkeling. All right, now this morning you said he had it pretty severely, the asthma. Yes, sir. So your wife gave him a bath? Yes, sir. Now why did she do that? They they said at the clinic lukewarm baths when it got too much for him to calm him down. Relieve the worry and the fear. The fear of choking to death. Well, that's how it is with the asthma, sir. Calm him down in the bath. Mm-hmm. So she gave him one and she got up for work. This was what time, did you say? Six o'clock. Excuse me. Morgan. Ed, I got two things. One, the medical examiner's report. Strangled? No, no, no. The necktie must have been used to tie his wrists. They were the marks. Cause of death? He was drowned. Good heavens. What else? I was talking to the other boy, Chauncey, when the mother came home. He corroborated what she said. Willie was alive in the bed and making odd noises, so Daddy, that's Catman. Catman said, come on, Willie. I'm going to give you a bath. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of... Suspense. Meet star Stuart Irwin. Nothing's worse for an actor than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute, add water, lather one minute, rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch, dandruff remover shampoo. Mr. Catman, if you'll take that same chair. Sam, sit there, huh? Now, Mr. Catman. Yes, sir? Why doesn't anybody let me see my boy? Chauncey's too young, Mr. Catman. Maybe later. Chauncey can take care of himself. I want to see Willie. Willie's dead. Oh, Lord. So he is. So he is. Oh, Lord. Mr. Can... Catman. Yes, sir. I show you this tie. I ask you, is this... Yes, sir. That's my tie. When... When did you last see this tie? Why, well, I, I told Willie... Daddy was going to bathe him. He was taking bad with the asthma and... Getting frightened of the breath and so hard to catch, you know? What did he say? He said, all right. And lifted up his arm so as to be carried to the tub. I shut the bathroom door with my elbow. I was carrying Willie, you see. The tie. Well, I, I, I tied his hands. What did he say then? Asked me what for, and I, I said to play cops and robbers. It was really so there'd be no splashing. And then? I gave him a bath. Did you... Tell me, what did you do then? I looked at him with his hair all brown and long. Not stick up your red like mine and Chauncey's. That's my real son, Chauncey. He's going on six, you know. Yes. You thought of Chauncey? Chauncey, yeah. <sighs> and I wished 
I love my Chauncey like I loved her, Willie. I mean, Willie is my own boy, you know. Did you know that? And there was Willie. And he wasn't mine. And I was caring for him and doing for him. And I was always doing for him and fretting for him. And loving him because he was weak, I guess. He'd have to know someday his daddy wasn't his. And I loved him so. All mother naked. Like a little frog in there. And loving me back. Trust me. <laughs> and I knew I didn't love my own child. That's Chauncey, sir. Didn't at all. Not have, no less. So much as Willie. And it all came to this. It was her son stealing all my love from my own son. It came right down to that. I saw it just as clear as clear. So I told him, duck under. I wash your hair. Never let him up, I guess. That was Willie coming between you and your own son that... In what way did Willie come between you? Would you tell us? Oh, only in my mind. I, I only wanted to love Chauncey. It was only in my mind Willie came in the way. But you loved Willie. Oh, yes, sir, I do. Like it was my own, all my own. And you know, I was thinking about what you said. What was that, Mr. Catman? This is... No place me to see my boy. Uh, I, I don't want you to bring him here or, or over to the jail. When I get out, I'll see him in the proper way. <laughs> I'd sure love to take him one of those big yellow pads he's scribbling on. He just loves to draw airplanes and things, you know. I'll see him when I get out. I'll see about bringing Chauncey around to see you, Mr. Cadman. And you can have a pad for him. <laughs> oh, you keep getting mixed up. Chauncey's rough and tough. He's like me. He can take care of himself. It's Willie I want to see. That Willie boy. Wilford Jr. is named after me, but he isn't mine. Did I tell you that? He loves me. He trusts me. I'd like to bring him home. Surprises. Ed, haven't you got enough, can't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Mr. Catman, go with the man. I thank you kindly. You've all been most kind. What's the charge? Infanticide. What'll happen? He did it. Yeah. Would you find him guilty? to Infanticide, dramatized for suspense by Alan Sloan, from a story written by Eliezer Lipsky. Heard in tonight's story were Santos Ortega as Mr. Catman, with Nat Poland, Ralph Bell, Ruth McDevitt, Frank Butler, and Danny Ocko. Listen again next week when we return with The Crisis of Dirk Diamond by Sam Locke. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense on CBS Radio.